All right, guys, we are wrapping up our final reviews for all of the weapons in the Brave Arsenal. And if you haven't checked out those reviews, links to those will be all down below. Today, though, we're going to be looking at one of the most iconic pulse rifles in Destiny, Blast Furnace. This is a kinetic, aggressive burst pulse rifle. Originally introduced in Season of the Forge, and it instantly became the pulse rifle. I'm pretty sure everybody loved this thing. And it wasn't even our first aggressive burst. We had things like Go Figure. That was popular in Forsaken. It was just the difference here was Blast Furnace was just that good. It felt good. It didn't feel like those other pulse rivals where that fourth shot and that four round burst felt like a hiccup. I'm proud to announce that Blast Furnace has returned to us though, not only with random rolls, but truly better than it's ever been. Now I want to start off by going over its stats. Blast Furnace is easily coming out on top compared to other aggressive burst pulse rifles. It has the highest base range at 79, the highest stability at 64. It has moderate handling at 24, so not as high as things like Belsarius. Its reload speed is the second highest at 30 and it sits at 18 zoom, which is the standard pulse rifle zoom. But it is still one less than that of Belsaris and Disparity. Now keep in mind, zoom has no effect on our range anymore. It's just mainly that stickiness to your reticle, past damage fall off. Now it sits at 15 airborne effectiveness, which actually makes it the second lowest. Now keep in mind, this is a pulse rifle, and unless you're using things like Heat Rises, you're really not taken to the air with it. Now the other thing is its recoil direction. Here it sits at 65, which is the second lowest. But we do have to keep in mind that deterministic recoil now plays a role on this pulse rifle, just like many of the other weapons that have been rolling out as of recent. Now, moving on to our perks. In our third column, we have Keep Away, Shoot to Loot, Kinetic Trimmers, Zim Moments, Head Seeker, Snapshot Science, and Perpetual Motion. Without a doubt, guys, that third column is stacked. Every one of these, I would say, are phenomenal perks, especially considering we're going to be able to enhance those in the final shape. Now, in our fourth column, we have Rapid Hit, Desperate Measures, Firefly, Kill Clip, One for All, Frenzy and Rampage. Now, I'm pretty sure a majority of you right now are just here for Blast Furnace for PvP, but I do have to point out that it does have some pretty good things in PvE. In our third column, you may have noticed some perks that normally belong in that fourth column. This is what makes Blast Furnace so unique. It has double damage perks. We have Kinetic Trimmers, where sustained kinetic damage to targets emits a shockwave that damages any nearby targets. Now, this on Pulse Rifles takes 11 shots to proc, which normally means you need to fire four bursts, considering other Pulse Rifles are three round bursts. But since this is a four round burst pulse rifle, you only need to fire three bursts. This would then cause three kinetic explosions each dealing 7,895 damage for a total of 23,685 damage in that center point. Now, what does this mean when this is enhanced? This is going to just simply drop the shots down to 10 instead of 11. So again, still going to require four bursts from other pulse rivals and three bursts here, just a bit more forgiveness. I feel like a lot of people hate on kinetic trimmers, but it's in that high level content where you really appreciate this part. Obviously, things at level, you're going to melt way before you proc kinetic trimmers. When we're talking like grandmasters, absolutely. Kinetic trimmers will be proccing all the time. And keep in mind, kinetic weapons are still going to be good in the final shape, considering that kinetic weapon damage contributes to both meters of transcendence. Now you have other perks like shoot to loot, which is nice where you could pick up an overpower when you shoot it, or even ammunition. The enhanced version grants us plus five range, but I still maintain that kinetic trimmers is where it's at on this pulse rifle. Now for our fourth column, for PvE players, we have Firefly, which reads that precision kills with this weapon increases reload speed and causes the targets to explode, dealing solar damage to nearby enemies. Now, this explosion takes place within a 4 meter radius. You also get plus 50 reload speed for 6 seconds, which is very nice, with the enhanced version tacking on an extra 5 reload speed. It's a fun part, but unfortunately, there really isn't any synergy with Kinetic Tremors. It's just two really good perks, all on their own, that you can occasionally get both explosions out of if you proc them at the same time. For instance, if that 11th shot for Kinetic Tremors also ends up being a precision kill, you can make it happen. But normally what takes place is, well, you already kill the thing when Kinetic Tremors procs, and Kinetic Tremors will get the kill instead of you getting the precision kill. But we also have a ton of other damage perks that you can utilize. We've got Rampage, which of course stacks up from 10% all the way to 33%. It's been a power creep perk for a long time, but it's there. And the damage buff lasts for four and a half seconds, with the enhanced version lasting for five seconds. We also have Desperate Measures, which is a new trait. The perk reads that weapon final blows grant bonus damage, and then melee and grenade kills grant a larger damage bonus that can stack. So think Golden Tricorn, but more ease of use, but less damage. At times one, we're looking at 10% for seven seconds, times two. After 
after getting that melee and grenade final blow, this is a 20% damage buff. And if you score another one, that goes up to times three for a 30% damage buff. The great thing about Desperate Measures is that at any tier, just a single weapon kill refreshes that timer. And I'm hoping that the enhanced version of this is going to tack on more duration here. The other beautiful thing about Desperate Measures is that you can activate the perk while the weapon is stowed. This is when you're getting those melee and grenade final blows. It's a solid perk, guys, that can have really high uptime and add dense activities like onslaughts. Then we have friends. This is just a very ease of use perk where being in combat for an extended time increases damage, handling, and reload speed for the weapon until you're out of combat. Essentially, guys, after being in combat for 12 seconds, this just gives you a 15% damage buff, 100 reload speed, 100 handling, all for 7.2 seconds. A great perk, guys, that can activate whether you're dealing damage or receiving damage. Now, I know 15% isn't as high as those other damaging perks, but it's that reload speed and handling that's so appreciated. Unfortunately, the enhanced version doesn't really offer any additional benefits. I know, right? Kind of a head scratcher. Then we have one for all. We're hitting three separate targets, increases damage for a moderate duration. Now, this is a big buff. We're talking 35% damage for 10 seconds after hitting three separate targets within three seconds of each other. The beautiful thing about this perk is that it's so easy to activate. Literally just spray at three or more enemies and boom, you've got the buff. Now, this lasts for 10 seconds, but you can't refresh it unless you hit three more opponents after the duration is gone. Luckily, the enhanced version does last a little bit longer at 11 seconds. Then we also have Kill Clip. This is a 25% damage buff that we get after reloading. You can keep proccing this perk back onto itself. Not a bad perk, but yes, it is kill dependent. Now, it's important to note that some of these perks increases our kinetic trimmer damage. Now, unfortunately, I don't have more with kinetic trimmers, but I did have one with Frenzy. And yes, Frenzy gave our trimmer damage a 15% increase, going from 7,895 per trimmer to 9,079. We tried Try desperate measures, which yes, at times three, our trimmer damage increased by 30%, reaching 10,263 damage per trimmer, which is pretty nice, guys. I would say for me, the god roll that I'm looking for for PvE would be this shiny roll right here. Kinetic Trimmers, Frenzy, and maybe one for all. Because think about it, Kinetic Trimmers does that AoE attack. It can hit multiple targets and it can proc one for all for you, giving you that 35% buff. The reason why I'm kind of leaning more toward Frenzy is simply because that reload speed is so nice. It puts you right back in the gunfights. And if you have perks like Tac Mag, that also increases your reload speed, or even a Pendant Mag, which increases that mag size even more to 48, that in combination with Kinetic Trimmers and Frenzy would make this weapon feel very, very fluid. But again, I like that one for all swap off and maybe I would do something like shoot to loot, kinetic trimmers in that third column and in that fourth column, one for all and frenzy. Don't get me wrong, I like desperate measures, but that's where I'm leaning. Simply to just take advantage of kinetic trimmers and its ability to throw out AOE damage. I feel like it would be too easy to proc one for all or even you can go the other route of procking one for all and then completely focusing on a single target. Now, I don't have a one for all kinetic trimmer roll, but based on my testing here with Frenzy and Desperate Measures, I would assume that one for all does in fact boost kinetic trimmer damage. But if you can confirm that down below, we'll pin a comment. Now we need to look at how Blast Furnace here performs, because to be quite frank, many of you are probably not a big fan of Pulse Rifles and PvE, but I actually thought Blast Furnace performed pretty well in Onslaughts. But there's a few factors to why. Number one, it's a kinetic weapon. So it's doing 10% extra damage compared to its energy counterpart. Parts. Number two, Onslaught has overcharged weapons. Since we have overload pulse rifle this season, they get an extra 25% damage. Granted, this is going to be going away soon, but we do see pulse rifles in the artifact mods pretty often. Then number three, being able to pair kinetic trimmers with another damage perk is really nice. Let's break this down looking at some of the damage values. At base, Blast has a one mag DPS of 13,824 and a one mag total of 69,120. Now compared to a high impact pulse rifle, say for instance, Messenger, they have a DPS value of 14,054. The total damage value of 69,330. Then we have adaptive pulse rifles like Smart Minor Moraine. This gives us a DPS value of 14,292 and a total damage value of 81,939. Lightweight Pulse Rifles, like Shattering Bone, has a DPS of 14,209 and a total damage value of 58,971. Then lastly, we have Rapid Fires, which gives us the best DPS value at 14,968, but our total damage definitely drops off here at 56,880. Now this lines up pretty close to what we've tested in the past. And we noted when we reviewed Belisarius that its DPS value was also fairly low. But let's take Kinetic Trimmers into account. Like we mentioned as before on Pulse Rifles, it takes 11 shots to proc Kinetic Trimmers. 
And this deals 7,895 per trimmer, which goes off three different times. And on Blast Furnace, you can proc that twice in a single map if you're continuously firing, as it only takes three bursts compared to four. And this gives us an optimal DPS of 23,298, again, at the center point, with a total damage value of 116,490. Now, this isn't the only weapon that has kinetic trimmers. Chattering Bone also has it. Messenger has it. But look at the difference here in DPS. Chattering Bone, you can only get one kinetic trimmer off, and this gives us 19,917 DPS. Messenger is at 18,856 DPS. So this is just kinetic trimmers on Blast Furnace before we even incorporate another damage part. When we throw on Frenzy with Kinetic Tremors. This pumps up our optimal DPS to 26,799 for a total damage value of 133,994. That's for measures at times three goes even further at 30,292 DPS and 151,458 total damage. Now, I'm sure many of you may be thinking, Cross, we already have this. Chattering Bones got Kill Clip. It's also got Kinetic Tremors and you can enhance both of those and you're right, but it's still not as good. Taking one less shot to proc for enhanced kinetic trimmers on Chattering Bone still only allows kinetic trimmers to proc once. And for some reason, Kill Clip is not increasing our kinetic trimmer damage. Therefore, our DPS only goes up to 23,463 and a total damage value of 97,374. Now again, guys, I'm not entirely sure why this is a thing. Maybe it's just a Kill Clip issue. I don't have Blast Furnace with kinetic trimmers and Kill Clip. But regardless, in my opinion, Blast Furnace is the kinetic pulse rifle king amongst the legendaries due to the fact that it can proc trimmers fast, taking only three bursts, and can pull off two procs per Mac. Then we can cycle it in with other damage perks, and fellas, this is actually pretty good. And I know to my PvE players, you're like, Cross, I'm not using a pulse rifle inside of PvE. That's fine. Personally, though, I have one ready for the final shape, especially when we can enhance everything you have seen here today. Now, moving on to PvP. Now, I want to also talk about how recoil feels on Blast Furnace, because this has obviously changed a lot now that we have deterministic recoil. Now, deterministic recoil is a weird thing. Some weapons, I love on it, and I can really feel the difference. Other weapons, it kind of makes them feel off. On Blast Furnace, though, we tested for Four different options. One was at base of 65 recoil direction. Then we did a counterbalance mod, bringing it up to 80. We also tried arrowhead break, which kicks it all the way up to 95. And just the full send it, we did arrowhead break and counterbalance, bringing it up to 100. Now starting with our base 65, we see our first two shots in the burst go up, then the next two trail upwards towards the left. Then as we fire a full mag, it's overall pretty vertical, but it definitely does trail off more to the left as you keep firing. Next up, we have 80 recoil direction, which is just a counterbalance mod being slapped on and we see a single burst fire pretty much vertical but then as you continue firing this eventually sends it hard off to the right now keep in mind this is just us firing everything we're not trying to control the recoil we're purely just trying to see the pattern and that's kind of the thing with recoil direction it's like you can maintain that verticality for a certain amount of bursts and then it starts to veer next up we have 95 recoil direction with arrowhead break and we see our single burst trail towards the left just a little more than it was at our base at 60 but as we fire our entire magazine that bullet spread is very compact up until the last few bursts where it goes more left then lastly at 100 recoil direction our single bursts are pretty vertical a little towards the left still and when we fire our whole mag this is overall pretty compact pretty vertical as it should be and the rule of thumb for so long has been anything that ends with the five is the way to go so 65 75 85 95 or even just maxing it out completely at 100 recoil direction what i found there with blast furnace though was that things still Still felt very manageable at 80 or even 90. Matter of fact, my role that I'm specifically using in all of this gameplay is this head seeker rapid hit 90 recoil direction blast furnace. And it felt solid. Now I'm sure many of you are gonna want to overcompensate for arrowhead break, and I get that. The stats on this thing are so monstrous that that's completely fine. And on top of that, the handling bump you get from arrowhead break is really good as well. So if you wanted to go arrowhead break and just fully load that recoil direction, you most definitely can. Again, blast furnace is a stat monster. Even if you were to do arrowhead break with accurized rounds and a ranged masterwork, you're sitting at 99 range and still a very healthy 64 stability. And that's before we even include perks like Zen Moment or Rapid Hit, which of course loads that stability up even more. But this takes us to what the god role is on Blast Furnace. Now again, the role that I was utilizing throughout this entire gameplay was this Headseeker Rapid Hit role. And it felt good, guys. I wasn't really that crazy about 
many rounds, especially considering I have rapid hit as well. But it was nice. Yes, there was a lot of times I still had to go for the three bursts, but there were also times that I got the two bursts. And the main thing about getting a two burst with this archetype, and for my folks that main disparity, you know, you almost gotta just concentrate on the fourth shot of that burst. A lot of times when we shoot normal pulse rifles, we have that three burst pattern in our head. And so we're already adjusting the weapon on the third shot to then start that next burst. What you have to remember about aggressive burst though, is that you do have that fourth shot and you gotta lead that last shot. It's kind of a weird thing, but you'll get it as you play with it. It's almost as if you're having to reconnect or snap back to the target for the fourth shot. And the best way I can describe this is driving through. You're like literally driving through the target with that fourth shot. If you can kind of understand where I'm coming from and envision that the two bursts for some reason became easier for me. It was like I was having to get that visual and understand that recoil. Despite my recoil direction being pretty good here at 90, manually managing that four burst pattern is going to give you success in getting that two bursts. Now this is on mouse and keyboard. I also played on controller and let me just say it felt phenomenal on controller. Like kind of like Luna's How. I didn't really care for Luna's How on mouse and keyboard, but I loved it on controller. Now Blast Furnace is a different case. I love it on mouse and keyboard and I also love it on controller. And I feel like for my controller players, you're going to see lots of two bursts with this weapon. The main thing is how can we get consistent two bursts? Base time to kill for this weapon is 0.73 at eight crits. That leaves very little breathing room. From tier seven resilience and below though, you can get that same kill in 0.73 seconds in seven crits, one body. Now this is where a head seeker comes into play because it helps you in those 1v1s by saying, hey, you land a body shot, no problem. Your precision shots will be increased. And in this case, Headseeker allows you to seven crit one body, even at tier 10 resilience in 0.73 seconds. That's some very nice forgiveness, guys. That allows a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to landing that two burst. Keep in mind what makes this archetype so deadly is the ability to have so much reach with it. Even at a base of 79 range, we're at 39 and a half meters. If you did overcompensate and go all the way to 100 range, this cranks us out to 42.3 meters. Now that's impressive. Even the God Roll Messenger with all the perks in the world that are loading out range like full board ricochet rounds and a range mass work messenger cannot break 40 meters but blast furnace here can do that easily and as we've displayed it could do that without hurting the recoil direction or really any of its stats it could do that with just arrowhead break that's what makes it such a stat monster so for me guys head seeker is a must play for just allowing for those 1v1s to be secured the question is is what should we pair with it well you've got kill clip and kill clip is a very easy one to get going a single kill boom now you're running around taking people's heads off in 0.67 seconds in some cases 0.6 seconds when including head seeker and yes that's the beautiful thing i hear about blast furnace is that you have head seeker that is of course helping you in those 1v1s it also passively gives you plus 10 aim assist after dealing non-precision weapon damage so it's not as if Headseeker is just boosting our precision damage. It's literally helping you in landing those shots, which is why I'm saying, guys, you can get away with double stacking Headseeker with Kill Clip, or you can even do things like Headseeker and Rampage. Maybe you're going from target to target. Both have their different benefits. Now, I know somebody's gonna say, Cross, could you do one for all? Look, I've seen people proc one for all inside of 6v6, but to me, inside of things like Trials of Osiris, it just doesn't happen. I like perks that are gonna help me in those 1v1s. Rampage is even kind of a struggle for me in things like Trials of Osiris. Cyrus. What I like about Kill Clip is that you get the kill, you've got a little bit of time there to breathe, and then you move for the kill with a weapon that's going to shred easily into bursts. Now, the other side is, what about a roll that doesn't buff your damage in that final column? What about Rapid Hit? Well, guys, I liked my roll. Rapid Hit was noticeable. And again, considering that this is a four-round burst pulse rifle, you're going to get four stacks of Rapid Hit if all of them are crits. But even if they're not all crits, say just one of your shots is a body shot and the rest are crits. Dude, even Rapid Hit time three is super noticeable. We're talking 14 stability, 35 reload speed. I just mentioned a second ago how Arrowhead Break and Acarize rounds with Headseeker with a range mass work can boost our range to 99. Now you're already sitting at a healthy 64 stability, which let me just point out is miles better than many other aggressive pulse rivals, even beating out the likes of Disparity. But if you are looking for a weapon that's just super manageable, Rapid Hits is also there. What's even crazy is that you can actually drop Headseeker and go Zim Moments Rapid Hit together and just 
double stack it, which is like literally stability overload. I would assume within like a single shot between both of those traits, Blast Furnace probably just doesn't move. And if you have that role, please let me know in the comments below how it performs for you. Now, the other perk that's also in that third trait column that I really like, I love it on Philotatic Spiral, is Keep Away. Not only do I like Keep Away, but I love the enhanced version of Keep Away as it goes from decreasing accuracy cone growth by 5% to 7.5%. And again, everything you're seeing here is going to be enhanced in the final shape. Keep Away is a great perk. The problem is, is that if you have like Keep Away, Accurize Rounds, well, hell, fellas, you're running into a situation where you're already running into that range cap. If you want to make a play for Keep Away, I would suggest just completely committing to stability. Like you could still have Accurize Rounds, but maybe in this case, you have like a stability masterwork or even a handling masterwork if you wanted to overcompensate there. Now, Keep Away is really, really nice. It increases that reload speed and it would pair perfectly with something like Kill Clip. Look, I absolutely love Headseeker, but I can't overlook just how deadly Keep Away is, especially on weapons like Philotatic. It was one of my most used pulse rifles after Lightfall. And the reason for that was that it was hard carried by Keep Away. Now, the difference is, is that Philotatic had the great combination of Keep Away and Headseeker together. And that's really going to be the struggle here when deciding the God roll. Should you drop Headseeker for these other traits? Is one bullet of forgiveness enough for you? This is where getting that shiny rope is so vitally important on these weapons. There's just too many good trait combinations. And considering the shiny variants can have both traits in either column, be enhanced, why not? To me, guys, accurized rounds, a range masterwork, or a stability masterwork with arrowhead break, with trait combinations like Headseeker, Keep Away, or even Zim Moments, like literally if you get any of those three in combination with kill clip rapid hit and hell even rampage on that list I would hands down lock that roll every single time. Obviously, I want the head seeker kill clip roll. I've got the head seeker rapid hit roll, and it feels really good. And I think on controller, you guys are gonna notice that there are a lot of things on this weapon that feel very manageable. But there are gonna be some people that need rapid hits. They're gonna need that stability. There's also gonna be some people that want Zim moments and they can live without head seeker and would like a Zim moment kill clip roll, which is completely fine. What I don't want is for you to completely poop on perks like keep away. I think keep away for PvP is really, really good. And considering how much range you have for this pulse rifle to begin with, you're going to be within 15 meters or more of your enemies pretty much at all times. And that's the thing about using this pulse rifle. You are laning, you're pulling people into those 1v1s, and you are shredding. If I was to get an arrowhead break roll with Akira's rounds, and it was keep away plus something like rampage, guys, I would still keep that. I would literally lock that in, put it in my vault, and take it into the final shape. But yes, I am on the lookout for that head seeker kill clip roll. I'm also on the lookout for Zim Moment and kill clip. And just to be quirky, Zim moment and rapid hit. I just want to see how crazy is it. And it may be something like, dude, the two bursts is just so easy. It doesn't matter. You don't have to go for a body shot to increase precision shot because it's a laser and it literally just hits crit after crit. I know a lot of times we get into debates of whether or not a weapon is good for 6v6 or 1v1s, but I love the idea of a kill clip head seeker roll to get that single kill off and then just go to pound town. I would imagine it would be almost as deadly as like pre-nerfed Desperado on like Redrick's broadsword from back in the day. Like when Redrick's broadsword got going, oh my God, you would just shred entire teams. It may not be that crazy, but I'm assuming that the power here would be equivalent. Now, do you need to have 99 range? Absolutely not. Again, base, you're already hitting at 39 and a half meters. If you had arrowhead break, accurized rounds, and a stability masterwork, you're still sitting just below 41 meters, guys. So what I'm trying to say here is that there is a lot of wiggle room considering how good the stats are on Blast Furnace. The only thing that I don't like on Blast Furnace was its handling, which is why I think Arrowhead Break is the way to go. Cranks up that handling in 34, it'll make the weapon feel more fluid, and it's going to help your recoil. So guys, that is our complete review for Blast Furnace. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know which gun rolls have dropped for you. I will be focusing on getting this from now into the final shape. We're in the final stretch here, guys, to get all the shiny variants we could possibly get. Good luck to you. I hope RNG blesses you, as those shiny variants are truly one of a Kind. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.